Well, joining us for this very special interview is Mr. K. Venkat Chamani from Health and Glow. Thank you very much for joining us today on the Daily Dispatch. I want to talk to you a little bit about the last 18 months. Um, they've been challenging across industries, but also have uh, shown the world that uh, online is here to stay. And um, while the offline space continues to remain present, it's the online that is driving growth for a lot of brands out there. So I wanted to understand from your perspective at Health and Glow, what's been your uh, view and how is the last last 18 months stand out for you? So, uh, our view was one where uh, we were clear that the future is omni. Okay, The starting point for different people in this space could be either offline or online. But eventually, uh, these are two touch points that or two channels, if you were, that the consumer is really comfortable with. I think you and I as consumers are uh, comfortable with online and offline. And it really depends on your need state as to which you want to kind of get on to. So we find it, we found it uh, important early on to ensure that as a brand health and glow builds its connect with our customers uh, and future customers, both online and offline. And uh, that's how we've approached our business in the past as well. So we've been, uh, while we started off uh, 24 years ago as an offline retailer, uh, over the last five to six years, we've been steadily building our online presence. And uh, we've not been in a hurry to kind of ramp up and, and uh, you know play the kind of pure play online game. But we've been conscious of ensuring that we are building our Omni capabilities. And uh, somewhere around 2000, 18 and uh, actually 2019 maybe, we were pretty much ready with uh, our Omni uh, game plan and we started executing it as well. For example, um, back then itself, if you entered our store, uh, you would be able to kind of uh, do a self-checkout, that we call it. You could just use the app on your phone. You could just uh, go around the store, uh, pick up whatever product you wanted, just scan it, pay for it using your phone and just walk out. Yeah, There is no need for you to kind of, if you don't need to be attended to by anyone and you know what you want, you could just pretty much breeze in and breeze out with just scanning the products and paying and walking away. Uh, similarly, we also had what we call the express delivery at that time, uh, which is already in this thing. You could just place your online order in the cities that we have stores and uh, you could get your delivery the same day. Uh, and that uh, is something that is kind of really uh, picked up well. The third is something called click and collect, and uh, which is basically in case you're in office and you want to pick something on the way home. Uh, you could already place an order and when you're near the store, just kind of show your OTP and just pick it and move. You don't need to get into the store and waste more time when there are other people. So we kind of work towards ensuring that we are ready for an omni world uh, as opposed to just while the world was thinking binary, whether it is store or online, etc. And uh, we had built those capabilities at that time itself. And come the pandemic, I think uh, along with uh, our online orders on our app or website or M site, whatever, along with that, these features saw a serious pick. It's nice to have debates about online and offline, but I think both are important ways of experiencing either products or services going forward. And we continue to ready ourselves for the same. And right. during the pandemic, like uh, anybody else, we kind of uh, push the button on uh, really ramping up our uh, online assets, their build up, in the, uh, whether it's a tech part or the marketing part, et cetera, and all that. Right, and I want to understand uh, a little bit about the festive period uh, that we just saw and also the upcoming uh, season, which is uh, Christmas, New Year's, etc. I uh, want to understand from your perspective, what's the kind of demand that you've seen? Is it back to pre-pandemic levels at this point in time? So I think as far as beauty is concerned, uh, especially the offline beauty, offline beauty, I think uh, the uh, beauty product supply chain has uh, taken some time from different brands to get back to normal. Some of the brands which have lesser dependencies across uh, uh, overseas, they have been able to kind of ramp it up a little faster. But if we, even if I have a dependence on packing material or any ingredient from across the seas, I think uh, those brands have taken some more time to kind of get their supply chain back in order. 
So to a large part today, I think uh, the beauty business uh, has seen a bit of a lag compared to pre-pandemic levels, uh, purely because of uh, supply issues and supply coming back to normal. Um, and across the city, I think there are pockets which have done better. There are pockets that are yet to catch up. Uh, you know, I wanted to understand from your perspective in terms of the expansion strategy. What kind of offline expansion plans do you have at Health and Glow? We've got aggressive plans, and uh, we are for a brief period when the pandemic uh, set things back back a little. We had kind of held back temporarily, but we are back to expanding all across, and uh, we will be ramping that up. Um, historically. Uh, in the early stages, one of the founders was an MNC, uh, which came into India. And therefore, for quite some time, we had a cap on the number of outlets. I think the moment the uh, MNC moved out of the organization, our expansion started uh, somewhere around 2014, 2015. And we continue ramping that across the country. And uh, just before the pandemic hit us, we had kind of gotten off to a nice momentum. And now we are back with it. And we'll continue the offline expansion as well. Okay. Um, in terms of uh, fundraise, uh, what is the plan out there? Because considering that you're looking at aggressive expansion plans, I'm sure you have um, you know, some sort of funds as well that will be required for this expansion. I think uh, we're okay on the funds part. And I don't think I can spell out specifics on funding. Uh, apologize for that. But I think uh, we have our own plans in terms of ensuring that we are funding our expansion, etc. Okay. And the final question before I let you go in terms of, uh, you know, what is the kind of category diversification that you're looking at? Any further categories that you'd like to add uh, in your stores? See, anything that is relevant to the space that we are in, we will add as and when it becomes relevant. I mean, for a few years ago, uh, something like K-Beauty became relevant. I mean, we were one of the pioneers to bring it in. Several years back and right until now, we are one of the most serious uh, dermocosmetological product range uh, sellers. And uh, we possibly pioneered this entire piece at that time. Uh, a few years back, we were one of the early entrants with uh, men's grooming. Uh, talking about what, but I think uh, we've been the early uh, you know, entrants in most of these segments. And as in any new category becomes relevant, or we see them, you know, uh, we see a trend building. We usually kind of ensure that whether it is in uh, makeup, whether it is in skincare, whether it's in hair care, uh, whether it's in herbal, uh, whether it's in clean beauty, we are one of the uh, early uh, merchants, so to say, to bring that to our consumers. All right. And that's it. Thank you very much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thanks for your time. Mm -hmm.